Ah. Hello. How are you? Yep, it's me. I'm back, babies. Okay. Let's see what happens now. All right. It's 2.30. I'm broadcasting live. Let's see if I can get this. Let's see if it works. Oh, anyway, there we go. That's better. <laughs> you ever feel like somebody's staring over your shoulder? <laughs> let's see. Let's see how this is looking on the Uber tubas. Uber tubas? I'm waiting for this thing to catch up here. Oh, there I am. Oh, I look so excited. <laughs> okay, I'm on the Uber tubas. All right. So, have at the folks. Maybe they would like to stop in to say hello. Hello. And if not, I will talk about stuff, what I like to talk about. Oh, man. Ah, it's been one of those days. You know, things have been kind of uh, interesting, to say the least. Um, you know, one of the things that I always find fascinating is about photography is that there's a lot of uh, 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 misconceived notions or things about photography. And some of them, you know, I have them myself, you know, about some things. And one of the things that I always find that's fascinating is that, you know, working in this uh, business of photography and stuff is that, you know, I, you know, for instance, somebody came into the store um, uh, earlier today and wanted to, uh, to find out what the what the best camera was to take the best pictures and the answer to that answer the the ultimate answer to that question is that they all take the great pictures they all do it's all on how you use the tool you've heard and if anybody's watching any of these photo youtubers it's all the same thing they tell you the same stuff it's not the tool it's the tool user yes it's nice to have lights yes it's nice to have decent camera decent gear decent stuff but there are plenty of photographers out there who've done fantastic jobs with with little or next to nothing uh there is this uh, group of photographers uh, uh, a brother team called the star and twins and they actually were deconstructing photography you know they were actually doing large prints but with minimalist with minimalist gear and minimalist everything there was a series of toy camera ph yeah, photographers, you know, and the other thing too, is I get people coming up all the time talking about, you know, about, well, I don't want a professional camera. And I says, well, what is a professional camera? How do you define that? What makes a camera so unique and so popular? Is it the price? Is it the quality? And it says, no, and then I tell him, it says it has nothing to do with any of that stuff. I've seen plenty of photographers out there who are not what they call quote unquote professional shooting with what you would consider professional gear. And I see professionals out there shooting with not with, with gear that you would not consider professional. And I'm assuming this all has to do with dollars with some of these folks. And it really has nothing at all to do with any of that stuff. It's all about the person using the tool to make the job happen. You could be a professional and make no money and be a professional and be an amateur and making tons of money. The, the major difference between all that stuff is just about how you present yourself to, to the world at large. It has nothing to do with the gear that you get. You know, I, you know, I shoot with, I've shot with pretty much almost, you know, not every camera, but, you know, with, with a quite a few amount of cameras over the years. Between medium format, and I've, I've shot once or twice with a large format camera, tons of 35 millimeter film, you know, going from digital, from, those 80 bit, you know, this from like 2 million to 6 million pixel cameras from the Sony Mavicas back in the day. That's, you know, for those who don't remember, yeah, uh, Sony Mavica was this really, really uh, uh, amazing piece of equipment. It, you could shoot on floppy disks and you would get these, uh, uh, you know, which only held 1.4 um, mega, mega joules, right? No, <laughs> megabytes. You know, we're talking not, not about a lot of data, you know, and so you only get like these little 640 by 480 pixels. And for those who know, don't understand what that means, that means like it's a postage size picture. And, uh, you know, and I would used to make prints from this, 20 by 30 prints. And, you know, and the thing is, I wasn't trying to make, you know, fantastic photos with it. I knew the limitations of it and I just printed them up as such. You know, it, that's basically how you do it. 
You know, my, my folks uh, gave me my fir- very first camera when I was about 15, if I remember correctly. It was a Canyon 8E1 program. Now, technically, there was another camera or two before that. There was a 110 camera, and there was this Kodak Instamatic. Uh, you know, I really didn't. There weren't, it wasn't really mine. It was the family stuff, you know. So I started off with the, uh, the Kodak, uh, I mean, with the Canon 8E1 program. Now, back in the good old days, the Canon 8E1 program, the Canon 8E1 program was a of a 35 millimeter film cameras, fully manual. And it took, of course, the uh, Canon lenses, uh, manual focus. And, the, and I had, the, he, I got the 50 millimeter lens. And also he gave me a uh, 70 to 200, I think it was at the time. Or maybe 300, I forget now. But uh, the Canon right now, the, the camera, uh, just as a spoiler, it's, uh, it's, I still have it. I haven't shot with it in, I don't know, a couple of decades now. And all I do is I shoot digital, but it was the camera that I started with this stuff. And so I, ever since then, I've been shooting photography. I've been shooting photography, you know, you know, for a good 40-ish years now. And I've done weddings, receptions, portraits, high schools. You pretty much name it. I've pretty much photographed at least something or another around there for, for a variety of different reasons, for a variety of different folks. And, uh, and, and you know, and, and, and at any time during that thing that I really consider myself a quote-unquote uh, professional, because I always thought I was kind of starting out just, figuring things out you know of course you know after a few decades you think well i figured it out by now right you know but you know i i would kind of meander back and forth in that stuff and i wasn't until i uh left uh left college that i decided that i wanted to do more about photography and that i really started getting you know what i quote unquote a more professional now keep in mind i started in the retail uh, about 20 ish years ago in the retail business for photography but at least it's allowed me to keep continue to shoot and shoot and shoot and continue to shoot. Yeah, I get to play with some toys, you know, and I own some of those toys or I've owned some of those toys over the years. But, you know, it's basically what I've been doing for the last, uh, you know, 10 years. And it's really, I, I would say in the last, ever since my son was born, well, not since my son was born, ever since my son, I think, turned about two, I think I've really feel like I've, I've come, I've crossed the line where I can kind of consider myself a professional photographer now. And the reason why I consider that at this particular point is because that, you know, I'm actually making some dough at it. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not making a ton of money. I'm making some money at it, but I'm making certain to make some money at it. I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job at it. I feel like my photography now has reached a level of craft and it's, it's gotten just better and better and better. I've, uh, you know, is there some people I looked up to in photography who have mentioned uh, that they've enjoyed my work and, uh, and which tickles me to no end. So this is kind of a little bit of a ramble on today. I'm kind of hoping somebody's going to start popping up and asking me questions, you know, cause you guys can ask me anything about photography. Otherwise I'm just going to keep rambling, rambling, telling you my, basically my life story. <laughs> I know you're so excited about all that stuff. Like I said, you know, for those of you who are just tuning in or those who are just kind of watching it elsewhere and whatnot, you can uh, um, basically what I've been doing for this last uh, ever since uh, the, the pandemic took over uh, and I got furloughed from my job about back in April, I started doing uh, looking for other outlets to try to keep myself in the in the people that I work worked with and worked for and the community that I worked in, you know, as far as photography goes, to try to keep us kind of in, in you know in sync with everyone. Try to and show and show that I'm still out there, so I'm still working, I'm still doing stuff, I'm still teaching, I'm still doing these things. And you know, I was able to reach out with you know through my work connections to a couple of people and we did some webinars and we did some things and I found that I actually quite enjoyed doing this. It was lots of fun. And uh, this is where this is kind of the outgrowth of all this. This is the Photo Donald Live series. And my goal for this whole entire series, and I've said this before in other videos, but again, this is just a brief thing. I'm going to keep on doing these for until, uh, until I stop not doing them, you know, until I don't enjoy doing them anymore, you know. I, I, liked, I, I like doing these things. I like talking about my photography. I like sharing about it. 
I like talking about some of the techniques that I do. Right or wrong, these are the things that I like to do. You know, one of the things about photography, one of the things I've really enjoyed about photography is the fact that you never, ever, ever stop learning. It's a continual growth. Well, life is all like that about continual growth. But, you know, photography is to that. It's not like a job where you ever are going to reach master status. I mean, if anyone tells you, for me, my own personal opinion, if anyone tells you they're a master photographer, they're, you know, a true master of photography will tell you that he's never reached the, he's never reached the pinnacle of, of his photography. He's always learning. He's always trying something different, always doing something unique. There's always something new to learn. And the way the industry's changed in the last decade or so, it's just amazing about all the stuff that we've been able to do and accomplish and, and everything that we've done. Excuse me, one second. You know, it's been one of those things that I've, uh, you know, it's been, it's been such a, a joyous experience, especially in this last, uh, you know, these last uh, um, tw uh, 12 years or so, 14 years now, I've really enjoyed the craft of photography. It's been something that uh, has been building up and building up and I finally got to the point where I just like, man, this is, this is the bomb. I could do this forever. If I can get somebody to pay me to do it forever, I would. It would be like the perfect thing. Or if I could do it without having to, you know, reap any, uh, you know, bad side effects like, you know, homelessness and stuff. <laughs> but, you know, so anyway. But anyway, so, uh, you know, so basically I've been doing this stuff and I, and I, and I just get, you know, sometimes it just gets frustrating when somebody goes, well, I want to learn about, well, I, what's, the, what's the best lighting gear I can get or what's the best gear I can get? There's, there's no such thing as the best gear you can possibly get. There really isn't. Not when it comes to photography. Hell, you can make your own gear. There's plenty of photographers out there that make their own stuff. You know, there's plenty of photographers who like to buy the most expensive stuff. And there's, you know, photographers like me that just go with the middle of the road and stuff like that. The best advice I can give anybody out there who's just starting with their photography is not necessarily stick with a brand of camera, but try to stick with the tools that work with most of the things. So, for instance, if you're looking for lighting gear, you want to, you don't want to necessarily start buying stuff that you can't incorporate later on down the road. For instance, when I started off with doing student lights, I would, you know, again, poor student trying to find some things, trying to make the things some happen. So I bought some uh, uh, constant lights. Then I bought the, you know, the cheaper flashes. And then I bought some cords to go things so I can lock, lock it all. But I always had to run around and make all these changes, make these choices. And this really just bogged down the thing. And it stopped being enjoyable because I was too busy running around doing stuff. Well, you know, Later on, when I started getting more involved with that stuff, when I was like doing stuff uh, like, you know, back in the day I was doing portraits for high schools and stuff like that. I was doing these things. And one of the things that I enjoyed the most was uh, the fact that all the equipment kind of all talked to each other and it was like plug and play. And well, the reason why that was is because all the equipment was pretty much the same equipment. You didn't have to, you know, hodgepodge things together. So when I decided to get my own equipment about like this, uh, the, the photic system, it was made it made it pretty seamless for what i wanted to do i could put two flashes up or put the strobe up they'd all talk with each other it make things a lot more efficient yeah they were a lot more expensive to do something like that but it was certainly well worth the efficiency and the time to be able to do all this stuff you know so it's like one of those things that i've really enjoyed doing it's been a lot of fun and uh, yeah So uh, for some of you who might not know this picture behind me, this was a, uh, a, 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 a partnership or a collage or a, 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 a team up event with uh, me and, uh, and the lovely uh, T Topaz, let's see. Uh, T uh, Topaz is a, uh, is a burlesque dancer it's with the dance group uh, Moxie La Femme. And I met her psh, over 10 years ago or something like that. Anyway, I, I haven't seen the, the group other than online uh, lately. And uh and uh, they're always doing some really cool stuff. Anyway, so and then and uh, Topaz has been doing uh, some really funny TikTok stuff. So anyway, so anyway, so I convinced her to come down to Braid to the to, to work in the studio, and um, so we can do some of these shots. And uh, this was probably my more favorite shot that we've done uh, in, the, in the here. It was uh, it was this little uh, 
image like this. She was here. Let me see if I can move out of the way. See if I can kind of get out of the So basically, what it is is it's the Milky Way uh, that's behind her, a Milky Way photo that I shot. And I believe it was the one that I used of, uh, uh, that I shot down in, at the Casperson Beach. No, at the Venice Fishing Pier is where it was, on your Casperson Beach anyway. And uh, so then I took the same Milky Way photo and I projected it onto her. Now, you can see that it's slightly out of focus in the background because I'm using a, a, a low depth of field within. This was, I think it was 2A, 3.5, something like that. And I had to look it up again. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it, it, it turned out to be a really cool photo, you know, and I was really pleased with the results of it. And uh, I hope she is too. She said she did. So I'm hoping that's the case still, but it came out really, really cool. Very happy with the results of that particular thing. Let's see. I keep keeping an eye on the Uber tubers, but nobody's there. Let's see if we can't see j joggle some people. Let's see. Let's go to my U. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, photos. Photos. Uh, let me refresh this. This might be a short one today if I, if nobody wants to engage now oh, there it is okay so it's showing up there okay cool beans all right let's share this link elsewhere see if we can get anybody to to chime in let's see let's go to facey bookie There we go. We'll post it there. We'll post it here. Post it everywhere. Do do do. There we go. Let's see. Let's see if I could do this. I'm gonna text. Uh, let's see. Let's see, one more person. I know it's so exciting watching me text at this particular point. Everyone's so happy. There we go. Text a few people. We'll see what happens. So, all right. Let's see if anybody pops up up in there at that point. All right. So, anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. I was I was talking about uh, my, my, many, uh, my many ventures in photography. One of the places that I started working at back in the day was, uh, uh, as far as the retail portion go, was uh, this old camera store called Sarasota Camera Exchange. It was down in Sarasota off of Bahia Vista in 41. And uh, I was working for a couple called uh, Ray and Beverly Broth, and they had their uh, son-in-laws who were pretty much kind of running the place. And uh, and uh, it was a good time. I had a really good time. there. <laughs> So, so I, I think I think uh, the the, the son-in-law Lewis, who was running the uh, the the lab portion where I was working, I think he should have fired me. <laughs> there was there was this one time that uh, I was uh, I uh, I you know I don't I think it was one of those Harry Potter. I can't remember. It was so long ago now. I don't remember which book it was, but it was a book probably like Harry Potter. It first came out or whatever. I started reading and I couldn't put the damn book down. So the next thing you know, I get this thing at like the book at eight, eight o'clock in the evening and I'm supposed to be to work at, you know, I'm supposed to be up in, and I live in Venice and I have to be in Sarasota by eight 30 or something like that for some, something to do in the lab or whatever. And I, I finally put the book down. It's like six o'clock in the morning. I said, okay, I can't go to sleep. I can't go to sleep. And then I, I fell asleep. <laughs> I don't wake up until about 1130 in the afternoon. My cousins who were doing stuff around the house had heard the phone ringing off the hook. This is before cell phones, by the way. I just want to let you know, this was a while ago, you know. So I've been doing this for a couple of decades now, doing this retail shtick. And uh, <laughs> so apparently my boss was looking, Lewis was looking for me. <laughs> so I wonder where the hell I was. So. So I get on the phone and I'm like, oh crap, I'm fired. I don't, you know, I, which I didn't blame him for if he did it because that would have been a horrible thing. 
I mean, that would have been the, the just and right thing to do. But uh, I said, hey, he goes, you know, you're supposed to be at work. Yeah, I'm sorry. What were you doing? I said, I am sorry. You know, and how do you explain to your boss that you, there was a really good book, you couldn't put it down, and you were reading, reading it until six o'clock in the morning because you just couldn't put it down because you wanted to find out what happened next. <laughs> I, and I was completely sober. I wasn't drinking that night. I wasn't smoking or doing anything unnatural or altered. You know, I just was reading this damn book. <laughs> I wish I could remember that book that I was reading, but I just couldn't put it down. Maybe it was a Shannara book. Anyway, so the it doesn't matter. So the idea is, you know, so I'm on the phone with him, and I'm like, going, "Hey, uh, so uh, so do you? Am I am I fired? Because <laughs> there's silence on the phone. You just can't believe that I, uh, yeah, that's just the excuse I have. <laughs> so, I mean, if I was him, I wouldn't believe this shit either. <laughs> so I, he says, "All right, just come in. Just come into this. Just come in now." I said, okay. So I quickly run into the shower, slough some water on me, get this, go in the car, get up there. It takes about 40 ish minutes to get up there, you know, from where we're living. And uh, <laughs> I get there and I go see him and said, hey, he goes, just go do, just go work. And I said, okay, great. So I go and work and just see me at the end of the day. You know, the end of the day was only a couple more hours away. So. <laughs> Oh, he was mad. I, I don't blame him. I, I like I said that, that I would have fired my my ass for this stuff. So, <laughs> so at the end of the day, and I said, "Hey," he goes. He just looks at me. Are you ever going to do this again to me? He goes, and I go, "No." <laughs> he goes, "Fine," <laughs> and that was the extent of the conversation. I mean, I apologized and stuff and whatnot, but you know. Oh, man, that was nuts. <laughs> good times, good times. Now then, of course, uh, they got bought out by uh, uh, this camera, uh, camera company called Wolf Gamer, run by a guy named Chuck Wolf, who was, uh, at the time, I think some sort of marriage uh, convenience to, uh, to the Ritz Camera family, you know, married by, uh, you know, some sort of relative connection. I think if I remember the story correctly. And so there was there was uh, Wolf Camera and Ritz Camera. And they were kind of like competitors, and they were fairly large photography chains back in the good old days. But of course, in the good old days, what happened was digital photography started rolling around. Now, the you know, for those of you who weren't around at the time you know, or don't remember those times, you know, digital photography is, is nowhere near was was when, when I started out. In fact, the internet was just beginning to become the internet as it was you know it was still just rolling around and uh and uh, i was uh we started working for this company you know so so we worked for wolf camera it seemed like you know when they bought out the store and it was it was a little bit scary at times but you know they seemed to fit in and they seemed to be doing pretty good and stuff like that and then digital cameras really started to start taking off now, if, I don't know if any, again, for all you younger listeners out there, back in the good old days, uh, you know, used to have a, a photo processing center on every corner. Every camera store out there had a photo film processor because what you would do is you would get your film, you would go out, shoot some film, take your film into wherever and get it processed and pick it up in an hour, one hour film processing. That was the thing. You could pick up your prints in one hour. You know, there was no instant gratification. Oh, I shot a picture on my camera. Now it's on my phone. Now it's I shot a picture with my phone. Yada yada yada. All this stuff, this convenient stuff, was just you know one of those things. You know, and you would go there. And uh, it was funny, you know, as I was talking to this uh, this lady last night, uh, a friend of my uh, sister in law's, uh, and uh, she used to work for this company called Qualex, which uh, which was a, a nationwide film processor. They would do easily 10,000 rolls a day, she was saying, which I believe, you know, because, you know, they were servicing almost four states. Now, I, I, you know, if to give you kind of an idea, you know, I would go on vacation and easily shoot 70 rolls of film. These are 70 rolls of film. Let's do, let's do the math. The 70 rolls of film, 36 exposures. Let's see. How many pictures would that be? That's a lot of pictures, right? 36 times 70. That's 2,520 pictures. 
all shot with film, which I couldn't even see until I got them processed until I saw them again later on. You know, so it wasn't like I would go out and shoot like I do now. In fact, I actually find myself not shooting as large amounts as like I used to. In fact, I find my shooting myself in smaller amounts. Even when I do weddings and receptions and stuff, I'm not shooting like 3,000 photos, you know, you know, not like I used to do. I basically shoot a lot less now because I can actually gauge my results as I'm happy there. You know, back in the good old days, I had to kind of figure this stuff out as I was moving along. And the things would change, I would make a good guess. And that's basically about it. So anyway, so we used to do all this rolls of film. So that's basically was the brick and mortar of uh, the bread and butter, not the brick and mortar. The bread and butter of the photography industry was doing all this film processing. Well, film, uh, fortunately, is pretty much has, has gone away uh, quite a bit. So kind of the way of like, of like vinyl records have gone. It's still out there, but it's no longer on the corner. It's like if you have like a, your favorite, it used to be like you'd have your favorite record store, your favorite film store, you know, places where you can go and check this stuff out and, and whatever. But now all this stuff has pretty much been replaced by digital. And what happens is that now I have, you know, there's no more film, there's no more uh, film processor sending, no more record stores. There's still these places around, but they're not on every corner, not in every city, not in every borough, whatever you want to call it. They're still out there. They're still doing this stuff. But, you know, it's a very small amount of people are doing it. And you got to remember, too, with photography, photography is a niche market. You know, yeah, yeah, sure, everybody takes pictures, but you know, that was back in the good old day with film and stuff like that. Everybody was shooting film because they had to get their pictures processed. But now, in this day and age, you know, it's a, you know, if you want to be a photographer, photographer, shooting pictures and trying to make a living off of it, that's a very, very, very small market. You know, there's 330 million people, give or take, now, in this country. And, uh, you're talking about less than a percentage of these people are actually photographers. You know, it's like, it's like trying to compare the, you know, like the, the budget for NASA, you know, <laughs> typically, you know, not, not maybe not right this night, this, this year, but typically NASA's budget was a quarter of a percent. <laughs> and that's how they got stuff up in the Mars at this particular time, you know, on that kind of a budget. We're not talking, it's still millions of dollars, but you know, we're talking about a very minuscule budget. So we're talking about, when we talk about photography, photography, there's only a small collection of all of us, a very small tribe here. You know, you might say, well, you know, there's a bunch of photographers. Well, there's a lot of people out there who like to take pictures, but you know, people who are out there shooting and making a living and doing this type of stuff, that's a very, very small market. And it's not that easy to get to because everybody thinks they can take a picture, which they can to a point. But they're not necessarily applying all the necessary the right skills or expertise to all that stuff. Keep in mind, this is all just my opinion and stuff about things. You know, there's nothing that's out there. I'm sure I'm going to probably, if anybody actually watches this, which I haven't seen anybody pop up yet, that uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'll get comments from here and there. <laughs> Let's see, anybody here in the, in the Uba Tubas? Nope. All right. Excuse me one second. <coughs> Sorry. So, yeah. It's been one of those things. Let me see what else is going on. So, you know, Wolf gets uh, uh, starts doing this stuff, and the, and the industry is starting to change. You know, it's moving away from film. It's starting to go to digital. And then Wolf Camera kind of got into some financial trouble. They actually... Uh, they were still working on the same model. They hadn't quite realized that the business model was changing and they got a good deal from a uh, uh, Fox CPI to buy a bunch of photography process, you know, photo places you know, to process film and stuff. Well, you gotta remember this good deal didn't really turn out very well because again, photography's kind of you know, film processing starting to slide down a little bit. So, you know, people are starting to shoot things with digital cameras like I said, these Mavicas with the floppy disks were coming out. These were extremely, extremely, you can't find one anywhere. I mean, you can find them like junk piles or whatever or whatever, but you can't find it because, you know, find a floppy disk place. Uh, last thing I heard of like 10 years ago, there was only one, one factory still making floppy disks and that was for the government. <laughs> That's what this company, because they're, they're, they're the government needed floppy disks for their computers that some of them they were working with. 
Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. So, you know, so this was, you know, dang, you know, they made a million of these Mavicas. Sony did a really bangering job with the, uh, with the marketing on that. So film is slowly dying now. So Wolf Gamer gets uh, shoved to the, the bankruptcy court. And, uh, you know, there's a nice tearful little video from the owner you know, of the company. But, you know, but luckily enough, his, uh, his cousin-in-law, I guess, uh, uh, Rich Gamer uh, bought out the, the company. Of course, some stores had to go, some stayed around. But they kept limping along, and they kept trying different things. Unfortunately, again, they're all relying on this whole business model, and uh, and, and and the industry is just changing left and right. Photography was, was not going to, you know, film processing was not going to sustain the industry too much longer, and it was just basically just going slower and slower out the door. So now it's down to the point where you know, in the state of Florida, you got like a handful of photography stores. You know, there's not one in every store. I'm, I'm kind of fortunate that I'm working in a camera store still, you know. If I wasn't working here at this camera store, I would have probably have moved outside the, the state of Florida and gone someplace else. Uh, there's several camera stores, uh, chains or things that are still surviving, still islands of, uh, but they're all in the areas where, you know, people are interested in photography, interested in, in getting better photography or interested in the gear, the technology, interested in all that stuff. So I'm very fortunate to be working in a place like this. You know, Johnson Photo here at Great. Yeah. I've certainly been enjoying it. I've been teaching now, I think about for, for basically for almost two decades. I think this is what, 2020? So I started teaching, oh, probably a little bit before 2000, right? 99. So it's been a little bit over 20 years. I've been teaching photography and uh, teaching uh, folks about, you know, the first thing you start teaching about film photography, and then I start teaching them about digital photography. And of course, that's all I'm teaching now is digital photography. You might think it was a photography, photography. Nah, not really. You know, film photography had its own aesthetics and you had your own little things to worry about. Technically, aperture, shutter, and ISO haven't changed too terribly much, you know, as far as it goes. At least the physics of dealing with the uh, aperture, dealing with the shutter speed, you know, there's different te technology with it now, but, you know, basically that's still there. Now, ISO has changed the way we describe ISO or ESO, however you want to call it, where you deal with the, uh, the uh, sensitivity of the sensor. I mean, back in the good old days, you know, we used to describe the sensitivity of film at, with you know, with 100, 200, 400, and stuff like that, but now with digital cameras, you the the ISO is basically uh, changeable, which was not really a unique property for at least for photographers. It's like you get to choose your own things. That's the other thing about photography. A lot of people will just assume since you're shooting digital now, that oh, photography is so much easier. And I think I think it's actually made photography that much harder. There are certain aspects that are kind of convenient. But, you know, the idea is, you know, what's happened now is that you used to be when you were, a, when you were just shooting film all the time, you take your film, you take it to a lab, you get a process, they would make some prints, you would call through your prints, you would look at the ones that look good, which not, whatever, and then you would show them to your client, the ones you'd, you've picked out, and you'd say, these are the ones, blah, 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 blah. And, of course, you'd have ways to identify which prints that, you know, once they like it, then you can go back. And then you go back to this lab, order whatever sizes you need, you get the, all the sizes, you get everything done, and then next thing you know, you've got a bunch of prints. Now, you were not involved in the processing of the film. You were not involved with the printing of the of those things. That was all done by a series of professionals of, of, of what we affectionately would call ourselves lab rats who would actually do all this work for you. And it was just a matter of paper and chemistry and all this other fun stuff. So you had to keep track of all these things. You know, but as the photographer, no. Now, as the photographer, you're responsible for calling uh, image enhancement, corrections, uh, making, fixing things, removing, you know, blemishes, wrinkles, things like that. That's you. That's <laughs> that job has gotten infinitely more complicated. In fact, they expect that. You know, whenever you say you're a photographer, they expect you to know all this stuff. They expect you to do this stuff, you know. 
you know, again, there are some photographers who don't do that, or they some that they have they find this stuff kind of challenging. They just want to go out and shoot pictures. But in this day and age, if you're a photographer, you you basically have to uh, you got to be a, almost like a tech head, you know, nerd, and trying to figure this out. Oh, I got two. Let's see who's checking us out. Oh, let's say hello. Hello. Yep, that's hell. Let's try hello. Let's try it one more time. There we go. So anyway, so yeah. So anyway, what else has been going on? Uh, well, let me tell you about some things that are coming up. I've been kind of uh, rambling on as far as that goes. And so I just want to kind of talk about some of the other things that we're doing. Um, Monday will be my last of the evening free webinars that I've been doing. Uh, it's an evening with Photo Dono. Uh, my, and it'll be about macro photography. We'll all be talking about that stuff. Uh, the other thing, too, that's coming up is that there are a series of webinars that uh, Tamron has uh, graciously said they're doing through uh, uh, Johnson Photo Imaging, and I'll be uh, moderating and hosting those. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun. I actually just had the first one. Next one will be also macro with uh, Julian Bell from uh, uh, from one of the Tamron image specialists and uh, yeah for the work I've seen when I've I've looked her up and I was looking at some of her images some of that stuff is just amazing she's got uh, a great skill set when it comes to this stuff uh, what else is coming up uh, so uh, yeah, for those of you who weren't aware um, I just recently switched from uh, shooting Nikon with a Nikon D610, with a Tamron 24 to 70 2.8, a 70 to 200 2.8, macro 90 millimeter 2.8, uh, uh, Fotex Metros Plus flashes uh, for a Nikon mount, and the Nikon and the uh, Fotex uh, Indro 500 uh, Stro, and I sold all that stuff. <laughs> And I ended up getting an Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II with the uh, 12 to 40. And that's actually what I'm using right now to uh, shoot this video, which I hope the battery is lasting pretty good. So far, it hasn't died yet. So we'll see how it happens here. <laughs> uh, so I've been using this stuff now for quite some time. I've been using Olympus off and on for the last year or so. But, uh, but today, that was the last but it kind of did that uh, bit the bullet and just got rid of all the gear. But, you know, I was like thinking, well, why would I do that? But you know, kinda, the thing is the industry is changing again. So, and I had to decide on what camera was, was going to best meet my uh, workflow. And the one that's going to best meet my workflow is right now is the OMD series from Olympus. It's a micro four thirds. So it's a slightly smaller sensor than I was shooting with before, but Image quality is it's awesome. The reason why I bring that up is because you know I'm a recent convert to the to the mirrorless system as it was, and I'm a recent convert to a different uh, type of size sensor. Uh, this is all important. I talk about all this stuff in other videos and stuff like that, so you can always check them out. But if you're really curious, or you can ask me a question about it if you want here. So the idea is, you know, I I switched over to this mirrorless system, and I've really like I said, really enjoy it. So. Um, uh, Carlos, uh, who's our uh, Olympus rep, uh, he's going to be doing a couple uh, webinars uh, with uh, dealing with Olympus flashes, and of course the uh, um, the latest version, the uh, latest camera from them is the OM5 Mark III. They've got some really cool features and cool benefits. I'm really looking forward to that because I always learn lots when Carlos is in town, or yeah, at least through the webinars and stuff like that. So I always learn lots and lots and lots from him. Uh, let's see who else is coming up. That's going to be kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to be teaching my camera basics class. So I'm going to be doing that online right now. All my, all the classes and seminars I'm just doing online. I can't, I cannot at this point uh, where the place where I do most of the teaching is do them in house. Can't do that at all. At least not yet. We're kind of eyeballing in September is when we're going to start actually doing this stuff. It might be sooner, but uh, we'll have to take it one step at a time. Too many, too many interesting things are happening out there to, to make these things safe enough for everybody. You know, I'm not going to really go into all that stuff on this particular channel. I'm going to try to keep this channel more about uh, photography as far as that goes. Uh, photographers that I do enjoy, I just enjoy it right now. There's a couple of them. 
one of the one of the ones I, I tend to follow the most is Peter Baumgarten. Uh, he's a Canadian photographer living in the middle of freaking nowhere with amazing uh, dark sky imagery. Oh my God, it's some amazing stuff. Uh, another really cool photographer that I like to follow as, as well as Clyde Butcher. Uh, he's a, an amazing photographer and, uh, you know, he's been doing this a lot longer than I've been doing this, at least, a, at least by, I think for by four other decades. <laughs> amazing photographer, law of nature and landscape. He did a uh, really cool uh, exhibit at the Dolly Museum, uh, photographing some of Dolly's uh, uh, places where he was living over in Spain and stuff and just some breathtaking imagery. And so if you get a chance to check some of that stuff out, excuse me, I'll put some of that stuff on the links there below and that way you guys can take a look at it, you know, once all this is done. Yep, nobody wants to talk to me today. So just me just rambling, rambling on. <laughs> uh, for those of you, again, uh, who do catch up with these maybe at a later date, um, I will not be able to do one next weekend, uh, Photo on Live, at least not at 2.30. I'm still going to do one. I just don't know when I'm going to be able to do it. It's not going to be uh, It's gonna be sometime that weekend. I just don't know when. My son might be a special guest, uh, though unwilling. We'll see how that goes. I, uh, I might do it when I'm up in the Smoky Mountains. I'm not sure. We'll see how that is. Yeah, so I'm, I'm driving up to go pick him up uh, up in Maryland, so I'll be driving back down. Yeah. yeah, I still feel comfortable flying as of yet. All right, well, I'm almost down out of time here. Like I said, I try to keep these things to relatively short. Uh, I'm up in 43 minutes now, and, uh, and so no one has uh, stopped by to say hi. So, yeah, but, yeah, that's, that's the way it goes sometimes. I appreciate you guys. Uh, if we're at least uh, watching this and leaving comments later on, you're always more than welcome to stop by my uh, website uh, at photodono.com. You're welcome to uh, also support me if you'd like to through Patreon or through, um, oh, that well, reminds me through Patreon. Uh, for those who are Patreon subscribers, uh, which are my only two, uh, I just got uh, the other postcards in ordered. And they will be on their way. So I think I owe you guys two more two more postcards. I was gonna say I'll send them the same ones again. No, 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 no. I ordered two more sets of postcards, so some different stuff. So hopefully that'll be uh, here before I get there. I mean, here before I leave this weekend. I mean, so we'll see how that goes. But they are on their way, at least delivered to me anyway. Um, I can't think of what else. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, yeah. If you want to, you can check me out on Facebook at Photodono. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Photodono, also on Instagram. I, to be honest, I really don't do too much Twitter these days. I just mainly just follow it for some of the sound bites or the, uh, the tweets and stuff I see from some of the folks that I follow. There's some really funny folks out there in Twitter land. But that's usually fun. Uh, the other thing that uh, I do my Instagram, I haven't been doing a lot of instant Instagramming, but I've been doing some uh, just weird photos, doing a little abstract stuff. So if you guys like to see some of that stuff, you can always check out my Instagram feed. Most of the time in my Instagram feed does post up on my photo down a page. Again, that's photo down with an F. Don't forget. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. All right, guys. Well, thanks. That's it for today. Uh, I hope you guys will enjoy this. If you'd want to, please uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'm hoping I'll be doing a, a live on remote, uh, depending on bandwidth and signal and stuff. We'll see how that goes. And we'll try to do some stuff like that uh, this weekend. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot, guys, and I appreciate all the love and support that I've gotten over the years. It's been awesome, and uh, I look forward to doing some more. This was kind of like a big old ramble, you know, blah, 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 blah. I was kind of hoping I'd be just doing more questions about photography and stuff, but it doesn't look like that's happening today. So, well, listen, guys, thanks a lot, and uh, uh, I kind of keep remembering to look at the camera. I keep looking at me on the screen. So let's, let's try to do this. So yeah, there we go. That's much better. <laughs> so, let me look at your eyes, deep into your eyes. Hi, baby. How you doing?
No, no, sorry. So thanks a lot. Again, I appreciate everything. And uh, like I said, I hope to see you guys uh, sometime soon out there. Again, uh, please click like and subscribe. If I get 100 subscribers to YouTube, I get the name of my channel photo down. It'd be awesome. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.